Welcome, party people. It's another exciting episode of the Sincerely Accra episode. episode. Instead of saying podcast, but you know what? I'm not going to stop because I believe in myself. I'm the finisher. No, I'm the author and the finisher exactly. of my own intro. And so we can press on. Anyway, you are listening to Sincerely Accra. My name is. <laughs> Joseph in T, yes. Brought to you kind courtesy of the Gold Coast Report. That's the GCR Network. And I also have to give a quick shout out to my co-creator and producer, Mr. Kwame Asante Ofori. Ah, what's your name? Yeah, yeah. Obiambo Nsema Kwame Asante Ofori. Yeah. Silence, no, but I know you're clapping. <laughs> anyway, guys, listen, we are bringing you another exciting episode of Behind the Hits. Yeah. Yeah. So, when we start, we don't stop. we start, we don't stop. That's a Pringles, no? Hi. And today I'm speaking to a very interesting person. A very, very interesting person. You know, the very first time I saw her home, a video B, you see, exchange students. And you see, or she, she was wearing like a Ghana shirt and they're like, um, are you from Ghana? And she's like, Ghana, Ghana, Ghana. Don't ring a bell. <laughs> that video cracked me up. You know, I mean, that's all I have to say. Yeah. Honestly, I'm going to actually let her say her name because I just don't know if I say it right. <laughs> yeah. How do you say your name? Joda. Joda. Yeah. Like Joda. Because I'm a man. Joda. That's, that's it. Joda, uh, like my name. No, but I was like, what kind of, kind of Joda? Yeah, Joda. And I remember when you went on, um, 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 to Madame Joyce's. And, yeah. Uh, Joda. <laughs> I, was like, <laughs> I was like, wait, how do you say the name? <laughs> yeah, it's Joda. Yeah. It's yeah. Joda. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Okay. But that's what it means, right? It's the day name, right? Yes. Because I'm Mami Ajua. So. Ah. Oh, yes. Mini Mufuni. Make our government's name. Hey. <laughs> we are here with Mami Ajua Asiedu Otibu. Not my whole government. <laughs> The research is researching. Hey, it's always clear idea. Wow. Well, you know what I found out when I was doing it? Anyway, welcome to Cecilia Crown. Thank you. Welcome to Ghana. Thank you, Erd. <laughs> How has it been so far that you've been in Ghana? Um, refreshing. Hey. Like a chilled cook. Sa. Yeah, no. Like, I feel like I needed this. Um, this is like the first vacation I've taken this year. Um, even though I came from my grandmother's funeral. Oh, okay. Um, Rest I in peace. Thank you. Um, I was not coasting before a week and then I came back to Accra mm -hmm. and I've been doing things every day. And like, this is the first time as an influencer that I've been back. And oh, so it just feels really different to be like busy and important and, you know, hey. I like it. Yeah. yeah before, before I'm like, oh, aren't you that girl from TikTok? They stay and then they'll DM me. They'll say, oh, I saw you here. Yeah. That's how they are. Mm. Literally, when I, I, I'll just go out with my dad, I'll come home. Somebody will DM me and say, I saw you here today. I'm like, so why yeah. did you come and say anything? Yeah, they don't. <laughs> anyway, I, I learned that you used to be a really good liar when you were a child. Is that because you grew up as a pastor's kid? You always had to lie? <laughs> No, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, I was. I yeah. was. Yeah, I used to lie a lot. Um, yeah, I used to, I, I was a bad liar, actually, but oh. I used to lie. Like, I was a good liar because I lied often, but I was a. So, with practice, yes, became perfect. Yes, um, yeah. Um, and I feel like my dad stopped trusting me. Mm -hmm. And then, like, I just, it was like, they were, my parents were really strict on me. They were like, you can't go here. You can't do here because they didn't trust me and where right. I was going. So, yeah. So you always have to say, oh, I'm going for Bible study. Yeah. <laughs> like back in the day when I was in college, like my first two years, I was like in the dance team. So we'd have like, a, like club events and stuff. And um, I'd be like, yeah, we are doing something at school studies. And then the, the, the music is doing boom, boom, boom. And I have to go outside and, and pretend, go ahead, like, answer the call. Yeah. Like, so. Hey, what yeah. dance team was that? What kind of dance were you guys doing? ASA, African Students Association, was one of those cultural dance uh, groups. Yard. I saw a video of you and Tatis. You were teaching her. Like, yeah. Come here. <laughs> come here. Fetch water. Yeah. Is that where you learned this from? Um, no. Okay. So that's the Adua that mm -hmm. I've been doing. Um, I just really like the traditional dances oh, okay. and I used to really just do Ado. I'm not Ashanti, I'm a Kyopim. So oh. yeah, um, I just incorporate it with my content because I feel like that's the true Ghanaian culture. Oh, okay. And a lot of my American followers, they don't know what I'm doing. They're like, oh, it's just a Jewish thing. They don't know it's a Ghanaian thing. So mm. yeah. And then it also sets you apart. It'd be like, oh, it's very different. I like it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's true. <laughs> Even when I'm playing Ampere, they're like, hey, why What's is she that? jumping? Why is she like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i saw so here you have a twin brother yeah i do do you guys still live together yeah we do okay. um so yeah we live in a different place and then my parents live mm -hmm. in a different place yeah. yeah so 
I also know that growing up, mm-hmm. your brother was more of like the one to follow rules and he yeah. liked school. And you so you listen to my podcast. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I actually do. Yeah, J- I a lot of people don't know you have a podcast. Yeah. Joanna Please is what it's called. Yeah. I mean, she, there's, there's not a lot of episodes, but if the more of you listen, then you yeah, can give exactly. her pressure. Exactly. Because she has, so she knows she's not consistent. <laughs> no, I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> no, I do. Yeah. Thank so, you. so, um, do you have any similarities? Because it's like, you didn't like school as much. He likes school. He follows rules, yeah. you know? Um, we're actually really similar, like, in terms of humor as well. Like, he's funnier than me. Really? He's hilarious. But, like, he's more introverted. He's more reserved. Oh, so he doesn't want to... Yeah, he doesn't like to be in the public eye. Like, he never likes to be in my videos ever. Um, mm. But he's funny. I even steal some of his humor for my... Yeah, it's, it's a family affair. Yeah. yeah, I also have a fifteen-year-old brother, brother, who you, I, I think you love your that brother more than your two brother. <laughs> no, you talk about him all the time. No, I, because he was a baby when I was like, kind of like a teenager. So yeah. it's kind of like I say he kind of saved me because he's like, I don't know, he just brought joy into our family, mm-hmm. and you know, I just. Like an example is I used to buy him all his like anime gear and stuff Mm -hmm. and spend my money on him. Like, I just love him so much. And I think you said on your podcast that he kind of convinced you to start doing TikTok. Yes. Right? Yeah. Because you were funny. He was like, oh, you're funny. You should do TikTok. Yeah. Uh He used to um, make funny TikToks and then... Yeah, he was like, you should do it, like, just for fun. And then that's how it and happened. And he blew up and now look at that. So you give him some of your royalties. <laughs> no, of course. Like, he's like, can you send me this? Can you send me? And I'm like, of course, yeah. He's literally, he can't go anywhere and say that he made you. <laughs> no, he's, I, he actually doesn't, like, like when people talk about me, like, Joe. He's like, who's Joe with that? Like, we don't know. Really? Yet, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> doesn't ring a bell. No, seriously. <laughs> my family, they're like, who's Joe with that? Like, my dad doesn't even know that my name is Joe on the internet. Oh, really? Yeah. Ah, so wait, he's not aware that you're a superstar? No, he's aware, but he doesn't understand how the magnitude of it. Oh, okay. He's like, oh, okay, but yeah, my daughter, my daughter hosts and she's like funny, I guess, but... He has no idea. Yeah, he, he doesn't. Hey, he doesn't know that Yeba is in your DMs. Jesus, I'm still even <laughs> processing that one. Yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't even think like, he thinks it's just this calm thing and, you know... Yeah. It's good. Don't ask you for plenty money. No, it's true. It's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he wants me to be happy, so I. I think, which is yeah. which is great. You know, I was gonna ask you. I know mm-hmm. you wanted to be an interior decorator at a point. Yeah, but that didn't happen because your dad wanted to be a doctor or a lawyer. That was like when I was really, really young, and I think it was one of the jobs that I just kind of like like because I was young and I was a girl, and at the time, it was like, oh, it's nice to decorate. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was like a passing statement. He was like. No, no, you can never be that. Like, you know, that's like and so something you look down on. At that point, what, like, what was going through your, your head? Like, okay, this is not possible for me. At that point, I realized that that that's the, me being a, wanting to be an interior decorator was like the whole thesis of me following medicine, realizing that I could never do any casual job. Like, I would have to be a doctor, a lawyer, or something because I couldn't be a dancer, I couldn't be an actress. I mean, not to say that my parents wouldn't be happy, but it was in my parents' mind what would make me successful. Yeah. yeah. So what did you end up studying? Psychology um, <laughs> and um, anthropology. Fun fact, I did um, study biology for a year and I did really bad in it. So Really? Yeah. But I took biology one and two, um, but I didn't. So I was pre-med. I was okay. on the pre-med track to do medicine. Oh, okay. And then I wasn't doing well. So my dad was like, hmm, just go and do psychology <laughs> since, <laughs> since you like it so much. And I really did like psychology. Did you enjoy it? I did. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I really did. The mind. Um, I really enjoyed the case studies and stuff. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. They give you case studies and you're supposed to like kind of like give your interpretation or yeah, something. Yeah, and like kind of like dissect I- it and that kind of thing. Hey, that's nice. Yeah. I want to do psychology. It's fun. I love case studies. Yeah, it is. So, um, how old were you when you moved to America? About 12, 13. 12. And where in Ghana were you guys staying? Teaching and Guard. Teaching and Guard? Estates? Yeah. Greater <laughs> Estates. Great yeah. Estate. I'm a Teaching and Guard girl. How would you say, um, you know, where you grew up influenced your character and your personality? Because I honestly, I, I don't know. I, I feel like <laughs> I've not seen anybody that's like you. Wow. And I don't I also want to know where you got this whole thing of adding DNR everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Is it from Obriski? <laughs> okay. So my character thing is very weird. Like I was a very isolated kid. Like I didn't really talk to people. In fact, if you ask anyone in my primary school, they're like, mommy dear, she was always by herself, that kind of thing. Um, I think because I spent so much time by myself, I consumed so much 
internet, like YouTube TV. So I was like really obsessed with movies, that kind of thing. So I think I was just born this way. Truly, I feel like that's how I've always been. But I, I, I was sheltered. So right. that part of me was like really hidden. Um, and with the D thing, fun fact, my mom grew up in Kenya. And I don't know if you had like Kenyan accents, like when you had talking, oh. it's like, what, why? Like, it's very like, so I don't know. So that's where it's from. Is t- kind you of, making f- a little bit of fun? Yeah, of but also I did have a friend who, like a British friend, and she just started doing it. So I look, he like stole her thing. But like, <laughs> we used to talk like that. Like, and then me and my brother started talking like that. And so it's just like when I'm really in my goofy mood. Yeah. Yeah. No, but it's, I, no, it's hilarious. Thank you. It's the way you say <laughs> it's It's soothing. Like, Thank it's, you. I feel like everyone has the thing that they do that it's like, it's like funny, like, you know. Yeah, also since you're part in the sea of, you exactly. know, content creators right now. Yard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What was it like moving to America? Because you say, you know, you were kind of like um, sheltered. Yeah. And again, listen to your podcast. You had mm. said that you think that comes from um, being a pastor's child. Mm. You know, the relationship you had with a lot of people, it was almost judgmental. It's like, because you can't do this, you can't do that. So yeah. you just like to stay out of people's business so that you'll stay out of yours. That's true. But now you're in America. Mm-hmm. Did that change? Or how was how did you cope with the move? It was actually very difficult. I think I didn't realize how important Ghana was to me until I was leaving um, because then I realized that I actually have to start over and like, cause I think when I left, I was kind of making friends, but not really. Um, and realizing that I have to like start over and I'm not going to lie. When I first came to America, I created a whole different personality. Like I <laughs> really, fresh. yeah, because yeah. it was very hard to mingle. And I, I went, I lived in South Carolina, which is a very red state and very oh, Southern. Okay. So like, they don't even understand what you're saying. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so it was very difficult for me. Um, became isolated, got bullied a little bit, um, really affected my personality. I think it made me even more shy and timid. Um, so it was very difficult. Um, and then me and my twin brother, we kind of like up, we kind of like separated a little bit. Like he began to have his own life. life as well. And it was very yeah. scary for me because I had like twin, like we had like twin separation. Oh, okay. Because we did everything like, together. Yeah, you guys yeah. Really close. Yeah. You know, you go to America, it's like, okay, he's finding his yeah. new footing at you. Yes. Ah. And because he's a boy, it was easier. And like, when I moved to America, I realized girls have it harder, like making friends because it's like the cliquish thing. Mm-hmm. Like in Ghana, the click thing isn't too much. But over sure? there, that's not what they say. Every time the UK girlies come down, they say Ghana girls are not friendly. They don't know how to make friends. It's all click, click, click. I think, I think during primary school, secondary school days, it was like, if you're a nice girl, if you talk to people, you kind of have like a group, like even the quiet people had a group. And I feel like for me, it was like a predominantly white school as well. And so me being African and black, it was like, okay, you have an accent. And there was a rumor going on that I didn't speak English (laughs) because I never talked. Right. So... (laughs) It I was, can see how I can see how that can come around. It's like she doesn't yeah, talk. Maybe she doesn't understand. Yeah, us. yeah oh. it was it was bad. So, but you know, it's happy. So, to. um, I think was it 2020 when you joined TikTok? 2021. 2021. Mm-hmm. And I thought fu- you can sing and play the piano, girl. I found <laughs> I I went to the very very bottom. Wow, you did good. Your though. first TikTok. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Maybe you've deleted some of them. But your no. first TikTok that's there right now. You were literally singing and playing the piano. Yeah. Do you remember the song you were singing? Oh uh, um, no, I you, don't. You do. No, I, really I want you don't. to sing it. No. I want to be, okay, no, okay, no. okay. If you don't remember, so you have to sing a song for me. I want people to hey. hear your voice. No, it's crazy. <laughs> I'm sorry. I I'll give you a song. Okay. Do you know he's able? Oh yeah. Okay, I'll start. Okay. I hope I picked the right key. <laughs> no, it's fine. Okay. <clears throat> Exceedingly, abundantly, above all. Come on. All you could ask of, of, him. of him, according to Come the on. power that worketh in you. In you. Uh, why are you holding back? Uh, See, go to her. To, she sings like she can sing. I don't know. Y'all holding back. You know y'all holding back. No, I'm a church baby. So, like, I grew up in the church singing, yeah. that kind of thing. And you can sing too. Oh, small. It's giving Michael Jackson. I, baby Michael. 
Lucky. I used, I used to be like two choirs. Oh wow. Yeah, but I didn't I didn't take singing, singing seriously. Yeah. Uh, I hear your dad worked on the radio a little bit. Yes, for a lot of years. Um oh, okay. he worked at Joy FM. Oh, was he so, a presenter? Yes. Um he did the Super Morning Show. Super Morning yeah. Show. Yeah, he did that for a few years. Um and it's funny because it's like a full circle moment. Me. I was just gonna ask, yeah. do you feel like that influenced your interest in like what you're doing right now in any way? No, I think I wasn't really interested in it. I think it just happened. Mm. You know, um, my dad was really big with big on us with like English and speaking. Like he was very like know how to read, read well, talk well. So it was something that we loved doing. Um, and yeah, it just kind of happened. Yeah. You did say you used to read a lot when you were young. Yeah. What, what were some of the books you were reading? Oh, Babysitter's Club. Um, Babysitter's Little Sister. Uh, Debbie Macomba. That one there. I don't know I don't, that one. That one is kind of, <laughs> it's not Debbie good. what? Debbie Macomba books. Don't, it's very bad. It, <laughs> Why? What's that one <laughs> about? It's, it's, hmm. I wasn't supposed to be reading it, but. Hmm. Oh, Anyways. was it explicit content you were reading at a young age? I, I happened to stumble upon a, 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 a and what did you keep it's reading? It's like um, erotic cast or something like that. <laughs> please, please, I beg, please, please, Daddy and Mommy, if you are watching, okay. please, please, was a mistake. Okay, let's just move on. Did you what? Did you did you read Animorphs? Yes, Animorphs. Ghostbusters. Any, yes. Hardy Boys. Harry Potter. Harry Potter. Ha- um, What's Hardy your Boys. Harry Potter? Uh, Sorcerer Stone. Really? Yard. Wow, yeah. I've never heard anybody say that. Why? They, they typically pick Prisoner of Azkaban or Goblet of Fire. It's typical. It's typical. Yard. And you, you're not typical. Nerd. <laughs> I, I I read a lot of that kind of stuff right. and also um, uh, documentaries. I really like documentaries mm-hmm. when I was really young. Even now, I I still do like documentaries. So I feel like, like you know, my imagination is very wild. That's where I get it from. It's just like consuming so much information from the internet. So when you started your TikToks, right, mm-hmm. you were doing POVs, yeah, and I realized you were doing the um, African Uncle, yeah. Why that? Why was that like the angle that you started with? <laughs> was that a lot of like things that you had seen and observed? Were there a lot yeah. of African uncles that were being reckless? In no, yeah, I think um, I don't know. That's a good question. I think I experienced. I saw so much of that growing mm-hmm. up, um, and I was. I don't know. It was very important for me to talk about that kind of thing because. When I, I remember when I was really young, I really questioned a lot of things and why people didn't talk enough about, you know. Um, you know, abuse and that kind of mm-hmm. thing and the way people would talk to people. And so I was like really obsessed with it, obsessed with portraying because I saw it so much. And so my mind, like in this method acting thing where it's mm-hmm. like, I can be that person because I saw so much of it. And yeah. Yeah, no, because you are a really good actress. Oh, or she, actor, you. actress. I, I get really confused. I feel like actor is like the gender neutral one. I think you could say actor. Though. You can say actor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, no, no. And, and, I don't know. Are you looking at going into acting? I know on your podcast, you did say you were going to write films and yeah, do a bit more. Yeah. But I don't know. No, yeah. I, I'm actually working on a short film right now. Um, I'm really into cinematography. So it's okay. more like however the audience views it, but it has like a a general idea, but whatever feeling you feel when you watch it kind of thing. Open to interpretation. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I like. The, I feel like I would really like directing. I do like acting, but I think... I don't take myself seriously when it comes to acting. I want to step out of the comedy and do, you know. Like serious drama and stuff. Yeah. Romance. Romance. <laughs> <laughs> why, you, why you don't believe you can do romance? You can do it. No, like one of those like, uh, what do you call, you know, a romantic a comedy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, rom-com. Oh, yeah, rom-com. Yeah, rom-com. It would be sweet too. Eh, it would be nice, yeah. Oh, no, do it. We are watching Okay, I want to talk talk to you about some of my favorite TikToks that you have okay. done. Yeah, there's this one, the horror movie one. Do you remember? <laughs> yes. So you're watching a horror movie and you were eating something. Yeah. My dad speaking, hates that video so you much. That. Yeah, it has like over a million views. Yeah. No, that one was funny. No, that I don't. I feel like in the early stages of my TikTok, I was very, very like. I didn't care. And like the videos I made, I don't even know what I was thinking at that moment to make such a video like that. Like, I can't even tell you. But it's funny. Yeah, I guess. Oh, wait. So, wait. Now you think you're a bit more conscious about the type yes. of content you... Oh, yes. really? Yeah. Oh, what thing? Because of the numbers. And now I feel like the bigger you get, the more you have to think about monetization and um, okay. intentionality behind it. And, you know, yeah. But, but, I mean, don't you think it was it was flowing easier when you were just, like, thinking about the content and not necessarily thinking too much about... 
So like at first I stopped making the skits for a little while and I started doing like the advice thing um, because I felt like it was childish. <laughs> I really did. I felt like I had outgrown it. I felt like, no, like I'm 26. What are you doing? And so I recently started doing it again because I realized, no, I'm really good at this and um, people like this and it's Do you acting. think you were inter internalizing hate comments and critiques? Because I, for you to think that like what you were doing as childish, when you were entertaining so many people, like yeah. I'm just some hater somewhere said this is childish and then you, inter did you no. internalize, was that I what it was? I think it was more of my life, my real life okay. outside of like influencing. I felt like people weren't taking me seriously Serious? in my oh. real life. And I think it was me projecting my own insecurities with just... Also, I used to be a chronic people pleaser. So like okay. what everybody wants me to do and, oh, oh, you're doing it right. Or like, you know, you know, that kind of thing. And my family, they're like, yeah, why are you fooling? Like, you're a joker. Why are you joking? You know, that's the problem mm -hmm. with being funny. Yeah. With Jimmy. Exactly. Like, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. I, I, if, even from like when I was a kid, I would, uh, it was always such a weird description for doing comedy. Yeah. Because they, they don't mean it's in a harmful way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But at the same time, Jimmy and yeah, yeah. It's true. So it's just like, I can see how people will make you feel like you're not being serious. Yeah. But honestly, I'm, that was re really funny. And there's another one where you were like, if you are owing anybody, they should ask God. <laughs> because you're, saying, you're not paying anybody. You're not paying anybody. That's that based on a true story, by the way. Really? Yeah. So you didn't pay the money. <laughs> no, fun fact. Most of my videos are targeted to someone. I'm very petty. Yeah. It's so, true. Who is the horror story one <laughs> targeted? Who was, giving, who was speaking no, tongues? It's probably, it's probably, I would probably watch a horror movie and I was feeling like, you know, probably Home Alone. I was like actually scared. So I just channeled it into a video. Oh my god, it's so interesting to find out. Yeah. And then there's um give me all your number so I can call y'all. Okay, fun fact. <laughs> that video was supposed because I had just woken up from a nap. Oh and I saw a video of someone doing that and I, I made the video like I like that song. And it was supposed to go on my friend, just my friends. And I slept again. I woke up and I was like, oh, okay. Mm. I'll oh, just you keep posted it. it to the public by mistake. Yeah. And it blew out. Yeah. Yummy. <laughs> 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 oh yeah. my goodness mm -hmm. this is so crazy and, but you edit all your videos yourself right yes on, on the mm -hmm. TikTok thing wow yeah now I use CapCart Ka mm, mm -hmm. CapCart yeah right. <laughs> <laughs> I've upgraded just a little bit yeah a little bit mm -hmm. um, so you know your life has changed a little bit yeah you're, you're, you're popular how do you reconcile that because this is the same person you are keeping to yourself mm. you don't have a lot of friends because you know you're managing human relationships and now Everywhere you go, people. I'm sure every time you step out, at least one person will say they know you. How, mm. how does that like? How are you dealing with that? Um, it's 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 strange. Um, I think I am. I'm liking it a lot because I think my younger self would be really happy that I'm being, I guess, acknowledged because that's really something that I wanted. And I always say like my TikTok family is. I fe it feels like a family, especially when I go live and talk to them and we just chat. Um, it's like the friends that I really been praying for mm. and the family that I really been praying for. So it actually makes me feel really good. Um, I don't see it, it as fame or anything. I see it as just like you're doing something cool and people really like it and appreciate it. So, yeah. So what would you say is the most challenging thing about this new era in your life? Um, I think the most challenging thing is trying to figure out how much of everything I want to do because like I do a lot of things mm -hmm. with the singing and the acting and everything and um, which one I want to really monetize. And, you know, I think the monetization of it all and just people telling you, you need to do this or you need to get management. It's, it's really hard. You don't have management. I, I've Is worked with like three different management and it didn't work, it didn't out. work out. Yeah. What do you find the common denominator being the money? Um, and people money, when you say money, like what do you, do you, people are taking money from you? Yeah. People wanting money, more money and trying to cheat me, that kind of thing. Um, yeah. The percentage, percentage and cards, but meanwhile, you're the one doing all the works and not doing time. enough, like mm. realizing that, um, you have to find a good management that actually cares about you and actually will talk to people for you. Mm. Um, because most of the time they'll just, whatever. Thing. It could be something that's not even in your niche or something that it's not. Yeah. 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 Flat tummy tea. Exactly. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like nobody, uh, you, those things don't work, by the way. Yeah. I like oh, I my see. fupa. You yeah. like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. 
Yeah. No, but you know, I, I must say, yeah, everybody will always have advice for you. Yeah. But you need to understand that it there are some people, they are armchair critics. It's true. They've not gone to the field before. It's true. So, you know, you just... It's not everybody I have to listen to. Mm. It's true. Because you, true. Are, you have it. You have it. And mm. I think another thing, though, I will not, I will not even lie, is sometimes when you think too much about the monetization and the commodification of the art, then it gets stressful. It does. But you see, when you're just creating, ah, and it just, that's what, me, I have a TikTok. And, you do? Oh, yes. Oh, let me follow her. Yeah, but I haven't really posted in a while because I started mm. thinking too much. Mm. Because I used to do it when I was driving to work. And okay. it was, I just flew and then I'll be, you know. But nice. now when you think too much, then it's like, waka. No, it's true. Mm. It's true. Yeah. Yeah, I see. So, um, you're a big fan of Yeba. Yes, I and love Yeba her. Entered your, yeah, how, like, what happened? What did she <laughs> say to you? She followed you. Yes. Uh-huh. So, fun fact, I um I was about to use the bathroom, right? And I was like, let me just check my phone. It was such a run. Like, I was standing in the middle of the bathroom and the door. And I was like, let me just look at my phone. I see Yeba spamming me. I'm like, no, this isn't real. It's probably like a, a Yeba fan account. page yeah. or something. Then I go and she follows me. I'm like screaming. I'm at work. My coworker is like, oh, what's wrong? Like, what's going on? I'm like, Yeba followed you. She's like, I don't even know who Yeba like, is. I'm oh. telling everyone, Yeba followed me. They're like, who's, who's Yeba? Yeba? <laughs> like, and as soon as she follows me, she DMs me. Well, she DMs me and she's like, hi, I love your content. You're so beautiful. And I'm like, I love you. Like, I've been listening to you for like four years. And she inspires me, even like my music style and like what I listen yeah. to. And we're just having random conversation. She was like, I'm in CVS. I'm trying to find lashes. And I'm like, okay. Like so really chatting. Yeah, she's so cool and she's so humble. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about your podcast, Jordan, mm-hmm. please. Um, I think you have like seven episodes. Yeah, not that many. That, what I mean. Okay, so basically when I read like the description, mm-hmm. you said, you know, you just, your fans coming along with you, mm-hmm. learning about your life, your stories and stuff. Yeah. What is the general direction you want, you want to go to the, with the podcast and why are you inconsistent? Okay, so when I when I made the co- uh, the podcast, I really made it because I was going through like a lot of stress and mm. needed someone to talk to. And if you listen to the podcast, it's like me venting out really. Yeah. And, um, and it's just like a lot of my supporters really always DM me and ask me like advice for like mental health stuff and mm. what they're feeling. So it's kind of like our little thing where they can go to and listen and just like, you know, but I feel like I've been inconsistent because I've been really busy, busy. Oh, with okay. other things. And um, I'm going to try and, and it's, I kind of want to take it to like, you know, interviewing as well. But you should. I live like in North Carolina, which is like no one stays there. <laughs> so, <laughs> really? <laughs> Influencers don't live like also ah, live so there. Interview people, mm-hmm. then go to where they are. Yeah, no, no, yeah. Yeah, you can do like a quick trip somewhere, and uh, you know, you don't. Not all the interviews have to be sit down interviews. It's true. You guys can be walking in the park. Yeah, I like that concept. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. See, <laughs> follow you so I won't charge you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, okay. So, Joe, the, the podcast is called Joada, please. please. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, are there any other things that you're working on? Kind of music, kind of. Um, I wrote oh, a song. It's okay. I, I'm I'm like a perfectionist, so like I'm. Hey. I started hating the song. I did. Um. So. Oh my god. Who? No. Who is? Who are your friends? Who is in your? Who is in your circle? So, I feel. I don't have a lot of friends. I really don't. Um. I feel like when I started doing influencing, I I've lost a lot of friends because um mm. people people make up stuff because they feel yeah. like oh you're not making time for them and that kind of thing and also i i really like my space mm-hmm. and so whenever i have friends i i must really like you and really like like mm-hmm. to talk to you and i'm not a texter so i'm just kind of like you're not a texter so you like phone calls yeah i like facetime <laughs> oh my god i do i don't like yeah FaceTime. really <laughs> well you have to show your face okay we don't have to we can just talk okay phone calls uh, yeah let's see yeah, but I have a lot of um, friends outside of where I stay. So, okay. yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. So how did you link up with Madam Joyce? So she did like a Spotify TikTok post and she they asked her who her favorite influencer was. And she mm-hmm. said, Joda. You? Oh. I was so confused. I was like, really? What do you mean really? No, because like, okay, now I know like, you know, I'm walking in my, you know, but. You know, 2021, every time I open my phone, there was always one video of you trending yeah, I was on it. I really in 2021. Yeah. So why are you why are you, why are you sure that she's saying that? Yeah. 
So then she DM'd me and she said she was going to be in LA. And I was like, I've never been to LA, but I'm going to be in LA because you're going to be there. And um, that's how we connected. And she's such an amazing person. She's so sweet. You guys had so much fun on the podcast. We did. Yeah. She's, she's, she is a boss lady. Like she's very like, she doesn't play around, but she's also funny and fun and very uh -huh. humble. Ooh. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. Come on, Madam Joyce. Anyway, so um, how many times have you been to Ghana since you left? Three. Three? Yeah. This is your third time? Yeah. Okay. What's your favorite Ghanaian food? Watch it, watch it, watch it. Thank <laughs> <laughs> God you just did yes, it Yes, yeah. It's overplayed, overhyped, it overtalked about. We are tired, about. we are tired. <laughs> like, yeah. What's your, what's your watch it order? Okay, so watch it, like the basic watch it. Mm -hmm. It's art. Mm -hmm. Erg, mm -hmm. Garit, ah, yes. <laughs> uh, Willade, Fish. Literally oh, everything. Yeah. People don't like Gary. I'm not picky. Yeah. People don't like, I love Gary. I think Gary gives us some crunch. Yeah, it does. Yeah. yeah. Ah, you have taste. Mm -hmm. All right. We should get watching soon. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I'm actually, we are, trying, we are going to get watching from here. Oh, okay. We'll see. Yeah, I like Rache. Um, So I want to play a little game with you before we end. Okay. Okay. It's going to be a role play game. Hey. POV. Okay, okay, okay. Yes. So, you are an African mother. Mm -hmm. I'm your daughter. Mm -hmm. I'm going out. It's 11.30 p.m. I'm only 20 years old. Okay. We're going to do a Are you ready? Are you ready? Okay, wait, wait, let, let me get into my character. Okay. Yeah, get into your character. Okay. <clears throat> so, I'm sneaking out. I'm not telling you. I'm sneaking out. Okay. So, you can hear the door opening. Hey, where are you going? Oh, ma. And you are dressed like that. No. Mini skirt? No, What's ma. What's wrong with you? No, no, no. So I'm going for chair Oh, so this is what you've been doing? No, wait. You know, Auntie Joyce called me yesterday and said she saw you at the disco. Which disco? Yes, you were shaking your buttons with that no, boy. that was not me. I warned you. Oh, yesterday I was with Sarah. The you are following. Hmm. Oh. You are going to church with me. You need deliverance. We're going to pray that. A oh, I'm going to chair practice. Chair what? Chair, they say we should cheer come for Jesus. Life. Cheer for Jesus. Yeah. Cheer for Jesus. Yeah, I, I'm going to add a Jesus chair. No, you can't go. Close the door. Go and sleep. Oh no, mommy, please. I said, mommy, don't, don't push me. me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> don't push me. <laughs> I don't even know why I said that to me. <laughs> <laughs> dying <laughs> oh my goodness okay okay all right my last question to you okay. is what would you like Ghanaians to, well well Ghanaians mm -hmm. and everybody that knows you listen, mm -hmm. what do you want them to understand about who you are okay um I'm a very genuine person mm -hmm. um outside of all of the accents and characters I'm not cocky I don't <laughs> think I'm someone I'm not a lot of people think I'm trying to be like a what's the word I don't know, disrespectful or something. I'm just fun. Like, I just like fooling. Um, How and do I, they think you're being disrespectful? I don't, be, I don't understand. Some people think I'm doing the accent to mock oh. a fake Ghanaian accent. Like, I'm like a fake Ghanaian and I'm, okay. it has nothing to do with it. I just like fooling. Um, and um, more content to come. And um, remember my name. Yeah, Jordan. Jordan. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, where can they find you? You can find me uh Joda J O W O D R E R E R E underscore uh, no more underscore just three A's everywhere. Um you can find me in my horse. <laughs> <laughs> um and and honestly you can find me on your FYP because I'm constantly posting. So yeah. you probably come across my video and um You were yeah. saying that you are you are trying to focus more on Instagram because TikTok's acting funny. Yeah. Um, I like reels. I feel like the flow, like the audience and, you know, it's, it doesn't go up and down. I feel like with TikTok, it's like some days hey. you just, it's just bad. Oh, yeah. I see. It's programmed that way. Eh? Yeah, I think so. Oh, anyway. Thank you so much for coming Thank on our you. show. It was really great to have you. I was just listening to the uh, Men's Cook um, oh my God. podcast. And I was like, let me... The one with the terrible audio. I'm so sorry about that. I loved it. You had it. You had everything. Yeah, I did. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right, guys. That's our interview with Jordart. <laughs> I hope I'm saying Thank it right. You, you are. Yeah. yeah. Do you have any last words for your fans? Anything you want to say? Keep God close and um, be yourself. Love yourself and take it easy. Take yeah. it easy. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> take it easy easy yeah, yeah mm. definitely guys take it easy <laughs> and that's our show for me Joseph Inti at Sincerely Accra I want to give a quick shout out to the Gold Coast Report my co-creator and producer Mr. Kwame Asante you know it's always a good time on this podcast make sure you check it for us Come on.